they understood the body's natural cycles. So these unfortunate events are not by chance. One needs only to look at the result of the major political decisions of the United States since the inception of the United Nations to catch a glimpse of the ultimate goal. Every major war, assassination, terrorist attack, or security weakness exposed has two specific common themes. One, the unfortunate event makes worldwide news and scares or angers the public. And two, the result, no matter what, is always the expansion of government and the destruction of constitutional freedoms. It doesn't matter what the excuse or the explanation is, the result always tells the truth. A child can give the greatest excuses every time he's too sick for school, but if it always happens on the day of a test, the truth is revealed by the result. The major media outlets can give every explanation in the book as to why war is declared, assassinations happen, and terrorist events take place, but if they all end up in the expansion of government and the destruction of constitutional freedoms, the truth is revealed by the result. And because the vast majority of the public are completely ignorant of natural biological cycles of man, it is increasingly difficult for them to accept that these events are by no means an accident. In my rolling on the floor and, and trying to protect myself from the heat and, and being in the pitch black, not able to see, with the voices of those behind me screaming, kind of got through to me. I recognized who they were. Could identify the voices. Uh, are they going to come and kill me? No. No. Nobody's coming. a statement reportedly made by Attorney General Janet Reno during an interview on 60 Minutes. She allegedly defined a cultist as one who has a strong belief in the Bible and the second coming of Christ, who frequently attends Bible studies, who has a high level of financial giving to a Christian cause, who homeschools their children, who has accumulated survival foods, and has a strong belief in the Second Amendment, and who distrust government. through federal authorities that a second bomb has been found inside that federal building in Oklahoma City. It was an explosion at 9 o'clock this morning that did that damage you're looking at right there. Well, I just took a look down the street uh, at the Morrow building again. I see another bomb truck going, so apparently they're going to try to get out that third bomb that's been talked about. At the present time, the medical teams downtown are unable to get into the wreckage to retrieve more of the injured because of the presence of other uh, bombs in the area. I've been told by the police department that just as soon as those bombs are defused, they will permit the medical teams to enter. Now, we're also hearing from some witnesses on the scene that they've overheard from firefighters that were first on the scene that there was a possibility that there was a secondary explosive device besides the car bomb device outside the building, and that that device may have been placed near the nursery. Also, we're getting word now that President Clinton is sending anti-terrorism units down here to, to look over the situation to find out exactly what went on and what other danger may be out there in Oklahoma City. That's something we need to think about, unfortunately, this time, because as we've told you, two other explosive devices were found that were not detonated and they were larger than the first. The reports I have is that one device was uh, 
was uh, deactivated. Apparently there's another device, and obviously whatever did the damage to the Murrah building was a tremendous, uh, very sophisticated explosive device. So President Clinton just called Frank uh, Keating, Governor Frank Keating, and he says that three FBI anti-terrorist teams are en route to Oklahoma City. Right now they are saying that this is the work of a sophisticated group. This is a very uh, sophisticated uh, device, and um, it has to have been done by an explosive expert, um, obviously with this type of explosion. Now, the Justice Department is reporting that a second explosive device has been found in the AP Murrah uh, building in downtown Oklahoma City. We should find out an awful lot uh, when the bombs are taken apart. I think it was a, a great stroke of luck. As you're mentioning, it's hard to talk about luck on a day like today in Oklahoma City, but it was a great stroke of luck that we actually have got diffused bombs. It's through the bomb material that we will be able to track down uh, who committed this atrocity. The first bomb that was in the federal building did go off. It did the damage that you see right there. The second explosive was found and diffused. The third explosive that was found, and they are working on right now as we speak, I understand, both the second and third explosives, if you can imagine this, were larger than the first. The first bomb that was in the federal building did go off. It did the damage that you see right there. First bomb that was in the federal building did go off. It did the damage that you see right there. Still another problem, according to these groups, is the executive branch making a grab for much more police power. Some of it highly questionable in the aftermath of the Oklahoma City bombing. It shouldn't be the case that Americans have to worry that their phone could be tapped. It shouldn't be the case that Americans have to worry that their credit records could be made accessible by the FBI without them being involved in any criminal activity. The first draft of the House anti-terrorism bill was so loose it could let authorities define as an act of terrorism prosecutable by the federal government everything from threatening your spouse with a gun to blocking an abortion clinic. While the anti-terrorism bills ask for sweeping new powers, the ACLU and others also worry about numerous executive orders that the public knows little about. These orders could give the president, federal agencies, and the military near dictatorial powers. Talk to any police official anywhere, and pretty soon he'll bring up the shootout. February 1997. Two bank robbers in full body armor and firing AK-47s did battle with police on the streets of North Hollywood, California. It was every officer's worst nightmare come true. Cops outgunned by the bad guys. The one weapon that we've identified can go through a bulletproof vest at 200 yards. After the L.A. shootout, requests for surplus machine guns increased dramatically. The Los Angeles Police Department alone got 600 M16s from surplus. Nationwide, the number given away more than doubled this year. And many departments decided to issue them to regular patrol officers on daily duty, all because of one shootout in one city. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. We worth it because she believes the sanctions are working. In November 1997, former U.S. Attorney General Ramsey Clark headed a delegation of the International Action Center on his seventh trip to Iraq to investigate the continued effects of the United Nations sanctions on the population. We were shocked by what we saw 
an almost total absence of medicines, medical supplies, and spare parts for the equipment. Despite the heroic efforts of medical personnel, babies, children, and the chronically ill continue to die in vast numbers. The United States government claims that Saddam Hussein is to blame for the crisis. What is the real cause of the suffering? The sanctions. They are an extension of the 1991 United States War against Iraq. 